Hey GR Nerds, today's video is brought to you by the letter E, as in efflorescence, and its sister, deliquescence. This is the white, salty, chalky looking marks. You sometimes even see crystals that grow on some masonry, brick, and concrete structures. So let's have a look at it. What it is, what causes it, is it destructive, and pro tip, it is. So. I think we'll also look at what you can do to avoid it. So let's get into it. And don't forget, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And you know what I'm gonna say? Let's, let's rock. rock. Well folks, there's not many places you can say this is where it all began, but this is where it all began. Ironbridge, an amazing place. The river's in flood at the moment, but that's all right. The bridge is still there. It's been there a long time. And uh, yeah, there's just nothing more to say. Well, Geonerds, Thomas Pritchard and the Iron Master Abraham Darby III built this bridge way back in 1779-ish. Now the abutments, it's an iron bridge, everyone gets that, that's its name. But the abutments are made from local sandstone from Shropshire and it's exhibiting efflorescence and efflorescence damage to the sandstone way back in those days so it isn't just concrete and brick that can suffer from this this is a stone structure as it comes this is in flood when i was there last year amazing great place by the way absolutely amazing part of england shropshire So folks, while we're looking at efflorescence in old structures, here's London Bridge in 1749. See the church and the monument at the northern end? Well, this church is St Magnus of the Martyr. There it is there, the churchy bit. It was built by Christopher Wren, just after the fire of London. And the steeply bit was built a bit later. But here it is here. Now it's an awesome place to go if you're in London. Thames Street, not hard to find. Just down from the monument. Now this place is seriously old. It's got bits of the old London Bridge lying in the foreground there, bits of the rocks, and they've actually found a piece of the old uh, Roman Bridge. But look at the efflorescence here, coming through the sandstone. It's just hooking through. And uh, of course, this bit of oak here, of course it has to be oak, uh, is well old. This is like uh, you know, getting up towards 15, 1600 years old. This is the oldy and ye Romany. Oh, there you go. But anyway, let's have a look at some efflorescence in some modern structures. And I will talk about what we can do about stopping it. Mm -hmm. 
So here we have a modern brick retaining wall and it's obviously suffering from efflorescence. You can see all of the powder and the crystals. This is in a tunnel and you can see this is quite advanced. Uh, and this is what it looks like close up. Now, this is damaging the bricks, and we'll look into the mechanism of that soon. This is in a building, in fact, in Brisbane. This building's built in the 1970s, and these bricks are starting to already degrade and spall because of this. You also see it in a lot of concrete structures where the water gets in behind the concrete, and of course, these are in drains and tunnels. If left alone, it forms stellic tights. This is at Bankstown. Look at the efflorescence coming through the seams in this particular structure. And this is a dam in New South Wales. And look at the efflorescence. You saw it at the intro. The dam is just loaded with it. The water is penetrating that concrete. And also you get it in really old structures. This is actually in Greece. And you can see the efflorescence coming through. That's not cement mortar, it's lime mortar. And pavers are not immune. If you put them down, you don't seal them properly. This is what you get. You can get them in some really modern structures. Now this young man is an F-15 Eagle pilot based in Iceland and he's in a hardened shelter here. He's just chucking his uh, camera cartridge in there to record all his gun camera footage. And he's about to be scrambled to intercept some MiGs that are, you know, plain silly buggers, as they usually do. And uh, these aircraft are amazing, but look at the concrete shelter behind him. sick of listening to those engines start up ever. So how does this efflorescence happen? Well, it's all based around water. This particular scenario, the water is coming from the soil, probably carrying salts and picking some salts up from the masonry itself. It comes on the inside and deposits it. This one the water is just being sucked up by the masonry and redeposited on the outside. Now these salts can be many different salts, but they all have one thing in common, of course, a salt is water soluble, very soluble in water. It also conducts electricity, which can cause other issues, which we'll look at when we talk about reinforcing. So some of the salts you can get are calcium sulfate, sodium sulfate, potassium sulfate, calcium carbonate, sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, vanadial sulfate and manganese oxide. Now manganese oxide is not technically a salt but it does occur in these efflorescent residues. And there's more. There could be lithium carbonates, all sorts of stuff can come, whatever's in the ground, if it'll dissolve in water it'll go through the brick. And if it just went through the brick, precipitated on the inside and put a nasty little rash on it, no one would care, you just wash it off. The trouble is the humidity can drop while the water or the salt solution is still inside the brick. And then the schisting begins because the salts will drop out of solution inside the structure or the fabric of the brick or the mortar or the concrete. And when they do that, they expand and they expand with molecular pressures and they will blow that brick concrete mortar apart as you can see with the spalling events and they're only small but you know these things can be there as you've seen with St Magnus of the Martyr for 300 years it will eventually destroy the structure So folks, if your efflorescence looks like this, you've got problems because this iron oxide rust is coming from the rebar, almost certainly inside this wall. Rebar generally is self-protecting. It corrodes, yes, but it consumes the oxygen around it in the process and it stops unless the oxygen keeps getting replenished from water or salty water or even worse, uh, galvanic salty water where you have different alkaline potentials in the concrete and it starts to eat away at the rebar. And this is a big problem. It can be also called concrete cancer, but it's a bit of a broad term. 
So if you see this, you've got efflorescence at the top there and iron leaching, this structure is in real trouble. Real trouble. It'll start to do this. It'll start to spall and the rebar is buggered. Now, proper rebar looks like this when it comes out of concrete. It's not corroded at all because it's been protected by the concrete. We thought we could be clever dickery and coated in epoxy quite a few years ago and this has turned out to be an absolute disaster. These structures are corroding faster than they should. Here's the Orville Dam in California. All that green stuff you can see up the top is epoxy coated rebar. That's not going to be good in the long term. So what can we do about controlling efflorescence and protecting our concrete, brick and stone structures? Well, first of all, we can build the damn things properly. Now, the, in the olden times, they had an excuse. We don't. We know what it is. One thing we can do is don't put salt in the damn concrete. If you try to make it go off a bit faster, there are other chemicals you can use. Don't use salt. And if you're out west and your groundwater's a bit salty, you've just got to live with it. But the structure generally looks like this. So these are all important parts of this structure. But the membrane is very important. The drainage is very important. The ag pipe in the bottom of it to get the water away is very important. People tend to focus on the structural side of this, how thick the concrete is, how strong it is, where the rebar is, all that stuff. But if you don't protect this thing, it's going to have a much shorter life. And there are numerous ways to do this. This is under a house, so it's probably a basement. But there are ways you can do external walls that are not quite as expensive you can use uh, fabrics you can use different types of gravel you can use just ag pipe with gravel anything that gets the water away with weep holes etc and i think the uh the absolute gold standard is these gabions i think gabions are absolutely fantastic they flex they drain they're in galvanized cages i think they're just great and uh, this is an ideal way to do it, where you've got a proper drain under it, pulling the water away, especially if you're going to have a garden bed on top of it, which often happens. So, T-Rox, what if I've already got this stuff? What can I do? Well, if you can't afford to fix the problem, you can alleviate the symptom. First of all, clean it off. Do not pressure clean brick unless you really know what you're doing. High pressure cleaning can destroy brick and it can make it worse. So just scrub it off and just leave it the way it is for now. That's all you can do and keep cleaning it off when it happens. Don't under any circumstances paint brick. Now, there are some great products for covering brick, but it isn't paint. You can render it, you can do all sorts of things, and these coatings are designed to control the moisture of the bricks and let them breathe. You can even stain bricks nowadays and the mortar, but don't paint it. That will just make it much, much worse. The water gets trapped between the brick and the paint, and it just goes off. So there are some coatings you can get for the outside, but they're very special. They have to be porous. They have to let water in. Without water out without letting it in and it's it's a tricky thing silicons etc not completely convinced they're worth anything you've really got to fix the problem so don't rearrange the deck chairs on the titanic get your hydraulic teaspoon get down behind the wall and fix the problem stop the water getting in in the first place or punch a few holes in it put some drain pipes in it and let the water out there's another idea i also think we need to talk a little bit about uh, Deliquence. And deliquescence is hard to say. Deliquescence is very similar to efflorescence, but the water comes from the face side of the brick and it brings the salts with it for the environment. So, yes, sealants will actually help with that, but you often find both deliquescence and efflorescence occur in the same structures. So, one will make one better and the other one worse. Again, you've just got to seal it up. And they do that with sometimes nowadays silicon coatings on the bricks, various um, anti-damp coatings, which just stop that water from getting in in the first place. And just before we move on, a couple of examples of what I think is deliquescence. Because these uh, structures obviously don't have moisture entering from behind, and I'd say this is coming out of the environment. Anyway, that one looks good when they cleaned it up though, for sure.
Ah, the mighty Gordon Dam. I've flown up this valley in ages some 48 years ago. Amazing piece of gear. A lot of efflorescence though. Here we go, this is in New South Wales. A lot of efflorescence on this dam. And of course our favourite dam to hate on, the Paradise Dam. With our newly tuned efflorescent eyeballs, we can see this dam was suffering from efflorescence and it wasn't that old. Uh, but it's not going to suffer from much for much longer because it's going to be replaced. There we go, look at it on the sides there. Now, in Western Australia, there's an awesome dam called the Wellington Dam. Here it is here, and it was starting to show its age. A bit of efflorescence there, obviously, a bit, just a bit of concrete staining. And, of course, the uh, West Australian people, being the very resourceful people they are, they found a way to cover that. There's no AI in that, folks. That is real. You can go and visit this place. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into efflorescence and deliquescence. So, as usual, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. It does help the channel. YouTube's becoming a very tough environment. And you know what I'm going to say. I, I need, need you, you all to just keep, keep rocking. Because T-Rox is out. out. Me too, son. Me too. And who are you? Robin Banks. I was earlier. Now I'm depositing. <laughs>